What's going on, everybody? Bobby Fai with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, Sheets, as usual, uh, took down another tournament, and this time League of Legends won and, and for another 10K, which was huge. Uh, the nice, uh, I had a nice golf weekend. I really, I mean, I, you know, you probably say the one play away thing, but, you know, it was just one of those things where you, you, you vary your lineups enough and you just sometimes don't have one of the, the right combinations, but I had the right guys and just one, one missing piece kept me out of winning the 250K, but another, you know, triple your money kind of a week for golf. Uh, oddly enough, somehow a five out of six finished third in the monster on FanDuel. I don't know how I, that managed. Dude, I told you, you got to keep playing that. Yeah. I mean, it, you it doesn't it. seem like something you look, well, you're not going to win a million, but everybody ignores it. And you just, you just do really well in it because of it. Like you don't get all the experts playing and it's a really good tournament to do well in. Yeah. And it's, it's a great example. I mean, we'll get into basketball in just a second, but I, I do, I think it's just like, that was one thing that stuck out to me is that Sam Burns, who's, you know, got th three and a half times the ownership on DraftKings that he gets on FanDuel because the because in FanDuel he's priced up at the top. Just play that guy on FanDuel. Like, you know what I mean? Just All play right. him where he's lower owned. It doesn't really matter. There's no real difference. You know what I mean? Especially in golf. Anyway. All right, Sheet. So let's, let's uh, you know, give me your thoughts on your weekend and then and we'll jump into the same. Yeah. So meanwhile, we, um, we, uh, it's two straight weeks of this. So remember the week before you had, um, and I got to tally the results, but, but uh, from our, our contest, but two weeks ago, uh, Kenny's top sub uh, 10K guy to finish top five won the tournament, Cam Smith. This past week, my sub 10K guy, Sam Burns, yep. won the tournament. So we got we got something going on there. Yep. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, you know, and this this week's to be kind of a different type of golf week because the better players are playing in the match play, but the more traditional uh, DFS slate is going to be, you know, the weaker players in the Punta Cana. And uh, I, I literally, I have no interest in the match play. Um, stuff. So I'll be just probably just supporting the, uh, the projects will be supporting the whatever, but we, we could do videos on both because the match play is kind of cool because it's kind of a different way to construct. You know, right. we, we, you know, we had this not an argument. We had this discussion last year when we had the match play that I was much more of a stickler for, for bracketing it out. You know what I mean? To make sure that you had guys had passed to the top four to, and you're like, dude, no one's making the top four. And, and you were right. Like no one even got close. Well, like well, yeah, more so that, that if you play guys from the same thing, it's just something other people aren't going to do. Sorry. Right, no. right, right. So we, we will definitely do it because, I mean, there's, look, listen, it's almost like the calm before the storm because it's just basketball, you know, but then we have the, the golf. We can handle that. I got the MMA. It's the calm before the storm because baseball's coming soon and, yeah. it, and it's going to be a zoo. <laughs> um, but fortunately, as baseball comes, NBA kind of like becomes like almost play, the playoffs pretty soon, yeah. right? So that's so then we'll be on four game slate, so we can be able to handle it a little bit better. And with any luck, there's not going to be surprise injury news for playoffs. Right, um, right. It's always possible, but but it's not uh, it's right. not likely. Let's put it that way. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm looking forward to that. Just even the NBA, uh, the, the MLB, even when it's uh, when it's busy, it's 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 not so. There's so many different ways to, to approach it. It's just you don't need to like worry. And what you think early in the day is pretty much going to be what you think at the end of the day. All right. So listen, I'm, I want to share my screen in the NBA, and I, I want to just talk about the NBA. So, like, um, so yesterday I cashed in the uh, in in the whatever the 555 with exactly 300.00 points, which I think is kind of cool, just to kind of post that. And the reason I bring it up is this: like, listen. I'm not complaining. I'm one hundred thousand in the NBA, like within like the last month and a half, right? Yeah. Uh, in that in that thing, but NBA is an extremely difficult sport. And, and at, to to wit, right? I cash in that five fifty five. I play the five fifty five now, like every day, whatever it is, five five seven seven seven. I have to go back and check my records. It's an, it would have it broke a string of at least ten straight non cashes in that, mm -hmm. maybe fifteen. Okay, and it's not like I played bad. I mean, it's just it's just. The NBA is very difficult, and it's also very difficult if you're not going to be, you know, serious enough to stay on top of all the late-breaking news. And it's, I'm just, you know, so for people that get frustrated, it's frustrating for everybody. And mm -hmm. my, my initial comment to you guys, by the way, is probably you should probably work harder, okay? Because the NBA, it's, it's easy to say you're frustrated about it, yeah. but the, the, the fact of the matter is that I would say about at least 30% of my whatever bad results I have was just due to the fact that I was not able to put in the work to do what's needed to be done, like mm -hmm. to stay later and, and to come up with the late things. So, so before you get frustrated with the NBA, the first thing you should look at is yourself and say, am I really putting in the effort needed? Because it's not like League of Legends. It's not like even baseball. It's not like other sports where you can put your lineups in and, and the amount of times like not paying attention affects you is like 1% of the time. Mm -hmm. The NBA, if you're not paying attention, affects you literally 100% of the time. Right. You know? 
So, yes. so, so that's the thing about the NBA. If you're going to play in the NBA, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's tough, you know? So, so again, so step one, if you're not doing well is look at yourself and make sure you're putting in that work before you start blaming variants. Yeah, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. And, and it doesn't mean you can't play well and, and lose, but right. you are, you're, you really, you really have to be dialed in when people say, well, Oh, what did this happen? Oh, you didn't talk about this guy on the show. I'm like, well, when they announced two guys out in the chase and this guy's just in the starting lineup, I'm going to change my mind a little bit. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you got, you got to be ready for these things. If you, if you want to give yourself the best, the best chance possible tonight, actually, however, you don't have to be dialed in for too extra long. Cause the last game is at eight 30. Um, and we have our first game with uh, new Orleans, Charlotte, Sheets, what do you think about the, the slate overall? It's one of those, again, that we probably pick up a little bit of value later in the day. Um, but as of right now, not like this glaring, crazy value slate. Um, so that, that, that's what, that's just the, yeah, we see this, we see this from time to time is that at this time there's, there's, there's no value and not no value, but it's a slate that doesn't look like there's a lot of great value. Right. And then we always say just because of the law of averages, there's just something that's going to come up later, you know, yeah. even if we don't know exactly what it's going to be. Um, but I still think it's really important to, to do this early look to see what's, what, you know, what, what, what's out there now right. and what types of good plays that we're looking to kind of, kind of get to. Um, well, and, so, and just to, to that point though, even just, just even for my own personal results and sort of what you're saying, like a lot of times I'll leave and I'll make the pivots of some things, but I usually leave like a lot of my original builds that I do after the show, at least in yeah. some things. And, and, and of course, if somebody, you know, majors out, I'll make one little switch. But they, they end up a lot as my secondary third third lineups or whatever. Those lineups keep winning tournaments. So maybe in some ways I'm not even sticking with my early thoughts enough. Um, just wanted to throw that out is that, you know, you do want to be flexible, but you also want to play the guys you like early in the day, even if other good stuff comes up, at least in some lineups if you're multi-entering. Sorry, Sheets, go ahead. No, I mean, I'm ready to get after yeah. it. Um, yeah, for, for first, uh, for first game, what are, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, so it's the same type of, of debate. Uh, that we kind of had um, with regard to Charlotte. Uh, LaMelo continues to project as the better play to Terry Rozier by a healthy margin, but it seems as though the eye test and the results test would seem to indicate that that might not be accurate. In either case, both guys seem to be relatively alone, at least the first at least at first look. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that you could play those guys. I still just remember, again, from a projection perspective, I think Lamelo looks like a better play. And I, I really don't have too much else on the Charlotte side, um, at least right now. Um, on New Orleans, uh, CJ McCollum looks, see, CJ McCollum looks <laughs> to me to be a very similar play projection wise and whatever else to, to, to Lamelo. So my, my initial thought would be to just put the two of them together in the same lineup and hope you get one of those, one of those things. Um, so that would be my first, my first, I guess, thoughts on this game is to put CJ McCollum in a lineup with LaMelo, play the two of them, and then just kind of build around that. Again, that's assuming it's the only game on the slate, which it isn't, but I think that's, that's, that's one thing you could do with this game. Um, other things on New Orleans, not really nothing. I mean, Joe Bell always looks like a good play, low ownership, but every time I play him, he doesn't do anything. And when I don't play him, he, he scores 60. So I'll let you, I'll let you tell me what to do about him. But for me, it's basically just McCollum and Lamella. Yeah. I, uh, I think McCollum is a tremendous play. I mean, this guy's usage is absolutely out of control. Imagine if he was actually making shots too. I mean, he put a 44 against Atlanta the other night and you know, it was nine for 26 from the floor. Uh, this is a perfect kind of setup and matchup for him. Assuming the game stays close, of course. A very, very hard to fade him on FanDuel, in my opinion, at 8,400 only. At 9,200, I think this is a real, uh, a real price for him that makes a lot of sense. And, and I don't think it matters in a great, huge way, but I do think if Devontae Graham is out, it makes him an even better play. Um, and he's questionable as of right now. So I think he'll probably end up giving it a go. But my, my guess, my, my, my early plan is to play McCollum and, or, or Joe Val. And I think Joe Val is, you're going to get crazy low ownership on him on DraftKings. Another one that's really cheap on FanDuel. I don't mind going to it. What, what I would just warn people a little bit about Joe Val sometimes in these type of matchups, it's, it can go one way or the other. He tends to smash or he tends to get played off the court, which when they just played Charlotte um, on the 11th of, of March. So that's what, 10 days ago. And Joe Val got literally played off the court. He played 25 minutes only and had 22 fantasy. Wow. But then you put him up against Atlanta the other day and in, in a similar type of pace matchup and he puts up 50. So it's, it's kind of hard to know what to do with him in these 
situations. But I do think getting some exposure at really low ownership makes some sense um, for his upside. And then it's always the same story with Charlotte. You're, you know, one of Bridges, Rogier, or Lamelo probably has a big game, and, and potentially, you know, two of those guys. But I, I think on this slate right now, that none of them particularly stand out to me. But I, I, I probably will mix in a little bit of those guys. The value from Charlotte, it's again, it's unfortunate it's the first game of the day. But uh, in in Cody Martin for the minutes in a good in a good pace matchup, I don't mind if we want to do that. You know, we could certainly get us thirty on a on a good night, and he can get us twelve on a bad night. But uh, that that's sort of the only things that you know that I, that I first noticed uh, when looking at this game. And you know, the plum the Plumley versus hair that. The, the big man thing is just is it's really hard to keep to, to figure out what's going to happen on a night at night out basis with Charlotte because Plumley one about one thing about him is when he does get the, the run he, he can put up a lot of I mean he put up 39 the other day put up 33 in the next game it, it, there's there's an argument to, to maybe taking some shots on Plumley but mostly it's going to be just those other Charlotte guys for me all right uh, Lakers in Cleveland uh, sheets I'm pretty sure there's a narrative here and I'm pretty sure that assuming he plays, and I'm going to assume he plays, that uh, LeBron James is going to be low owned and he's playing back in Cleveland. I, I don't know, man. I, it feels like a pretty good spot to attack uh, to me. That was the first thing I, I thought of on, when I looked at the slate. And I also want to mention that Westbrook has been much better and much more efficient, especially over the last two games. Um, I don't think he, I'm going to play him, but if I, and if I did, it would be on FanDuel at 8K. But I don't think he I think he's a pretty like I think he's like reasonably back to getting that a little more of that uh, that, you know, his, his rollback. I mean, his his usage is up a little bit. So, so I'm open to the Westbrook on FanDuel, but I don't think I can get there on DraftKings and on Cleveland. I think Darius Garland is a very strong play. I'm a little shocked to see his early projection. I'm sure no other sites have him projected this high. The minutes he's getting are real, but to have him projected as a median at 50 fantasy points seems kind of crazy. <laughs> um, but I, I do think that he's, he's, you know, maybe 45 wouldn't even have thrown me off a little bit, but, but anyway, he's, he's, he's projected great and, and it's a great matchup. So I, I can certainly not argue with that. And I, and again, all these other guys are just other potentials for me. I mean, Laurie marketing has been like, has had some monster games. Then he comes back with a 16 fantasy point game. He was incredible in that game against Denver the other night. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play him personally. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind shots on Mobley, but probably would just be Garland or Mobley for me on the side. How about you? Yeah, so there are three three different points uh, of of discussion. I you 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 touched on both of them. I'll just add to what you said, but you didn't nail the three points. Number one, I mean, this is no particular order. I guess in least importance is uh, uh, good news for the Lakers in a way that that Westbrook is 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 playing better. Um, like you said, I mean, he's look. I, I don't expect him to be as efficient as he has been. I think he's shooting what fifty percent from three the last couple of days, or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. but. Uh, it certainly is good news. And this would be one of those weird games where if it were like a four game slate mm -hmm. and, and everybody was on LeBron for a good reason and to take like a shot at Westbrook, you know what I mean? Like, I think that would be kind of a cool thing to do, but it make it tough at nine K on, um, mm -hmm. on DraftKings to do that, especially on a big slate. Um, so I don't think I'm going to do it. The, the other point you mentioned, yeah. I mean, LeBron going back to Cleveland, I think, I think, most not most important, but very important to that narrative is the fact that there's no way he doesn't play. I mean, like, that's just, I, 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 I mean, and let's just put it if he doesn't play, I mean, then there's something wrong. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to play. Um, but you could, you could look, he's been, he's been listed as questionable every day and he's been playing, so there's nothing wrong with it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's certainly. But the weird thing is, I don't think there's much of a narrative bump for him here because, I mean, he's been doing this every, I mean, he's been trying to carry the team every day anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, you know what I mean? I think he's going to project well regardless. And he does look like a good play. Now, is he going to be a good enough play to outscore Luca? That's tough. Um, but, I mean, he's going to, like you said, he's going to be somewhat low owned. So I definitely think I have him rated as one of the top five plays on the board. I mean, for sure. So you want to consider him. But I think that again, the, the the real the real narrative is like yeah it's it's look look Lakers are playing in Cleveland like one time this season yep and so yeah that's a really big day for LeBron but this is the first time we get Darius Garland to get to go against Coors Field defense this season I think mm -hmm. it feels and, like and, 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 the team. yeah and regardless of what what his projection looks I mean like 
by the way, to answer your question, like like one one group has them at fifty, another another model has them at forty nine, and another like has them less ambitious, like forty two or something. But mm-hmm. so he's like in there somewhere. Right. Um, but the fact is, is that even when he doesn't project well, you know he's got that ceiling, and and uh, he, I mean, he could he could he could pop sixty here, you know, if, if if things break his way. So I actually like that, and I think that um, playing him with LeBron in the same lineup, similar to the New Orleans Charlotte idea. Um, is, is certainly is certainly viable. So you can get basically two low owned guys. If you get LeBron and I presume Darius Garland is going to be somewhat. No, I think he's going to be know? really jockey. Oh, you think so? And now yeah, you're going to guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think enough of the project- actually. Yeah, I have him. It's so funny. It's like again, I'm looking at different ownership. One's got him, like you said, at 35. percent Another one's got a 15. Another's got like eight. So this is gonna this is gonna this is gonna even out towards the end toward, as the day goes on. Yeah. But I guess I guess that people are seeing what I'm seeing. You know, the Lakers are a good good. Uh, a good team to target. But I don't know. There's a couple of other good, um, good prices. Maybe not exactly at that price. Like do, you, you like him. Uh, you like Garland more. Not that this is the end of the story, but or McCollum. same price as McCollum. For yeah, I think, I think Garland's the better, the better. Now, I mean, just, just you, you don't. I don't. I don't encourage that everybody game log watches. But Garland hasn't been below forty fantasy points. Um, as you would say, since the Eisenhower administration, yeah, one thirty-eight fantasy point game. Other than that, it's everything is between forty and seventy, basically, and seventy-five. Um, and this is a great matchup. And in those great matchups, he's been consistently great. His usage is higher than ever. He's never going to see this again. You know what I mean? Because even with Levert there, they're they're just making it. It's his team. Like it's. It, it, I like that they haven't treated it like oh, well, let's let Levert come in and try and take over games. Where they use him as a role player, which is what he should be used as. Because in real basketball, he's not a guy you you really want. But I, I really like what Garland's doing, and I think he's a very, very strong play with, I mean, knock on wood, like, what is the real downside for him in this matchup? Like, they, you know, really, like, what, 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 what is he going to get? He's going to get 40. Like, okay, so if he's basically a lock for 40 and he's going to get over 60 a good portion of the time, I kind of have to make him a priority play. That's my take anyway. Um, all right, Portland to Detroit. Uh, what are you going to do with all of this question? Like, I, I just feel like everybody in this game, I'm just going – do I want to do that? Do I want to do that? They're all going to be kind of owned. What are your what are your thoughts here? Um, first of all, with respect, so let's let's do I guess Portland first. Um, just as of now, as of whatever time it is, uh, the current my current top value on the slate is a very slim lead for Chris Dunn at thirty eight hundred. Um, but I mean, again, it's not the greatest value in the world, but it's not bad either. But you have Simons right now. He's currently oh he's one to two weeks, but he's only questionable. I, I don't know if he's going to be playing or not. No. I just, I do see him questionable. Yeah. And, and then you got Eric Bledsoe. He was, he hasn't played since the third of February, but who knows? I mean, they're hardcore tanking. Just keep that in mind. They're, they're, they're tanking in a way that like, they, it's not like somebody needs to tell them point differential doesn't matter when you're tanking. You just have to lose the games. You don't need to lose by 30. Right. Games. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, 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 I mean, obviously you probably want to look for who's going to be out and stuff, but I think that the Portland side of this game is one I'll either, if I have to play Chris Dunn, I'll play Chris Dunn. Mm-hmm. Otherwise nothing really is, is standing out for me. Um, the guys you'd want to play like sort quote unquote, the good players. I mean, you tell me they're tanking, but Josh Hart's playing like a thousand minutes. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, so there's Josh Hart and AK there's, I guess that's it. I don't know. I, that, that's pretty much all I have for the, the Charlotte side. I mean, for the Portland side, um, the Detroit side, I think is extremely interesting. Okay. Um, so Jeremy Grant was already ruled out for this game. Um, so you, you have, it's so funny. Remember at the beginning of the season, we were, when you first told me that Cade Cunningham, you started them all, started off playing like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And he his he's in the forties sometimes you know mm-hmm. and with jeremy grant out and portland being an atrocious team um and the spread only seven uh that sets up for a really really nice nice game for uh for Cade cunningham at 8400 in that mid-range and and on draft and on fanduel he's sub 8k i believe um over there um so Cade cunningham waits to be a really really good play and then there's other kinds of kinds of stuff so like Sadiq Bay at 7100 with 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 Grant out or whatever he at 7100 I think is a decent play Mm -hmm. then you get you get like kind of like funky like questionable tags like you have Kelly Olenek who's questionable so if he's out 
then maybe you get a bump to Isaiah Stewart, who's probably a good play anyway at 5,100. And maybe you get a bump on Marvin Bagley, who's probably a good play anyway at 5,900. And let's just say that he's out, and I guess that was the only guy I was thinking about. He, he, Corey Joseph, he's questionable. Can you even get down to who's who's that who's that uh, that three K guy? Yeah, say a livers guy. I think that like if the injury news breaks a certain way, mm-hmm. we got to stay on top of this. Now it is a seven o'clock game, so we'll, we'll we'll get that. But I will say there was one game recently where Detroit, they, although they announced guys out, they didn't release starting lineups for a while. Um, so yeah, they've done it a few times this year. Yeah, so it's seven it's seven p.m. So it is the first game. We'll probably have that, but I think this is um. I think this is a, I think this is a spot where you can play some of the Detroit guys. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, the Portland side, as of right now, I've got Chris Dunn pencil. Literally, it's a penciling in. It's it's not a guy who I'm trying. It, it's interesting because we we've seen Chris Dunn before. Now this team has less talent, so he gets more you know m- more usage. And he had nine assists the other day in 20, 24 minutes. Um, but I, I do think be a little bit wary about like. Chris Dunn is a guy who played 32 minutes plenty of times and, and couldn't get there for us at 3,800 um, in the past. He's been good. He had a good season in the thing. Once he, as his price starts to creep up, I'm going to have less and less interest. But if, 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 you know, I just feel like his, his minutes are a little bit too low for me to have to, to make him like a huge priority. But early in the day, he does show up as value. Um, I actually think Drew Eubanks is an interesting tournament play, and I don't think anyone's going to go there. I think this guy really does have a ceiling. They, it's weird because they play in so many blowouts. So I think – his minutes projection of like 30 could be 36 or 30 or seven. If it, the game's close, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's just hard to, you know, they just, they tend to run Watford out in the blowouts and um, I don't know, but I think Eubanks is, is mildly interesting. I really think that one of these Detroit guys has a big game here, but my, my current ranking is Cade Bagley, Bay Hayes, and then Stewart. And I think, and I do think Hayes is, is well in the mix, especially if Corey Joseph is out. But even so, he actually looks a little bigger, and he's getting a little better. Had some had some better upside games, and he won you 100k already this year. So we kind of have to give him a little bump for that. No, um, but I but I, I like I like uh, one of these uh, these Pistons, and like I said, it's that order that I have them. But I think that you know I may change that by lock, and and no matter what, if if somehow Sadiq Bay doesn't get owned, we just kind of have to keep playing this guy. Like the upside is there, and we you know yeah he's not going to shoot 10 and make 10 out of 14 threes every night. But he's really good. He can get a shot off whenever he wants. And if he gets hot, he tends to go nuclear, 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 however you want to say it. Um, he, I don't know. So I think he's got a massive upside in every in every matchup. And this is a great matchup for him. But I, it's just that high ownership. I'll probably have to pass on the guy who's so shooting reliant. Utah and Brooklyn. Um, boy, this is an interesting game. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts here? Because I, I have a bunch of a bunch of guys who I feel like I could, I could take 10% chances on, but nobody I feel like I need to play. So Utah back to back, they've been staying in New York last two days, I presume. Mm -hmm. Um, They played the Knicks last night. um, And I would have done better in the, um, in the, in that 555 had Trent Forrest not been ruled out because what happened, I had a lineup with them. with Donovan Mitchell and Forrest in that game. I had Forrest kind of as a placeholder holder. And then when he got ruled out, I had to kind of screw it or screw around with it a little bit. And I took Donovan Mitchell out and I put in uh, Rudy Gobert instead. And Rudy Gobert, you know, snowflaked and Donovan Mitchell smashed. So that would have been, uh, you know, that, that kind of, that kind of hurt me a little bit, mm-hmm. a lot actually. But um, uh, so I think that, um, I do think Rudy Gobert could have a bounce back game in the spot um that's that's the first thing second of all um Mike Conley I think he sat yesterday but I think he's gonna play today I mean I think I just sat him out probably just because it's a back-to-back or whatever it is he's not you know what I mean so I think he'll play and I think at 5600 he probably is probably pretty reasonable um so Donovan Mitchell remains a good play I think literally, literally every day he's under 10k um and against the match um, with a Brooklyn matchup I mean, he could have a really, really big game. Um, so I do like that. Brooklyn, I mean, Durant, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know if he's going to be as good of a play as some of the other guys, but um, at 10-7, um, he'll be low-owned, I think. Uh, so, so I do like that a little bit. And then, see any value here? Yeah, I guess Claxton again at 4K, showing up as a decent play. And I guess, like I said, it's more of a good a good game than it is a 
a great fantasy game, I guess. I don't know. So, so for me, again, it's Mitchell, maybe Gobert, just because he didn't have a good game yesterday. And then um, maybe Conley and then Brooklyn, maybe Durant, maybe Claxton. Nothing, nothing really that I have to play on. Yeah, I, I, I do like the Gobert thing. If I was going to take a priority of any of these guys, I think Gobert would be the one I would probably side with. Um, I think his projections are a little bit low. And we, we've seen, you know, we've seen some up and down games from him recently. But Brooklyn is a matchup we should absolutely be targeting. They bleed uh, offensive rebounds. They don't protect the paint well. Uh, putbacks, that type of thing. They turn the ball over. They get their shots blocked. All of these things are, 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 are big in the up column for, for Rudy Gobert. So he's my favorite. Uh, I don't mind taking a shot on Hernan Gomez for value. I actually think Hernan Gomez versus because of the, the forward eligibility too. I think he's a better play than Claxton is straight up. Um, Claxton has, we know he's got upside. I just don't, it's really hard to know what they're going to do with minutes and they've really been splitting them. But if we're, you know, Claxton and Drummond are both in play. Um, Durant is in play. It's kind of interesting to me that no one's going to play Durant. So I'm, 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 I'm like, kind of like going, should we just maybe take a shot here and play this guy? Um, but again, there's all these other guys who I like the, the spending better. I agree with everything else you said, Mitchell. All these guys are fine. The one other one who's going to be low on and always is, and I'll just mention that he's he's shot the ball really well, so you can take it with a grain of salt. But he's put up 40 back-to-back games now, Seth Curry, without Kyrie in there. Um, I think there's upside for him all the time. So he's, you know, 5,700, not the most exciting thing in the world, but I do think he's he's a guy who, I will, who I'll mix in. If Dragic is out, that's going to open up a ton. Dragic is in, Dragic is in play. If Dragic is out, that's, you know, you're going to open up a lot of usage. And then I might slide more towards Durant. I might even take the uh, seemingly washed, in some ways, Patty Mills. Um, it's very hard to, to justify that one. But if you, if you take Dragic out and it with Kyrie already out, Patty Mills at 3,500 can certainly get hot enough. James Johnson, all these guys sort of rate as possibles. But I don't nobody that I really, really want um, to prioritize. Uh, Miami and Philly and what another good, really good real life basketball game. Uh, what do you got over here? Cause I'm having trouble getting the much. Yeah. So I think Embiid's always a good play. Um, and he's not owned all too often. Uh, so I, I, I like that. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough matchup, but you know, that's why, that's why maybe he won't be 25% owned. I don't know. And, 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 and James Harden at 10K, you know, in a vacuum is somewhat is pretty reasonable. I mean, he could, he could always, he could always score 80 fantasy points, you know, and, and, and he's no one ever plays him because look somewhat for good reason. You know, you have, you have, you have Embiid and Harden kind of doing, doing stuff together, but you've said it before and we've seen it before. Harden's put up big numbers. Now, again, Miami's no picnic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, maybe it's not the greatest slate for it, but for, for you know, you're not going to get me to say X James Harden out of your player pool. Um, then on Miami, I mean, I don't know. I mean, not Bam. I guess looks okay. Butler just has become like a projection freaking donkey. Like nobody, like, like nobody, no, he, he doesn't project for any fantasy points anymore. Um, so I like Bam. I guess a little bit. Butler a little bit, but but really not a lot from this game in general. I would say Embiid, and then maybe Harden, and then. Probably just going to stay off the Miami guys. Yeah. Uh, I, so nobody's going to stand out from a projection standpoint for Miami. Um, but I, I'll play my little narratives when I feel that they're necessary. Yeah. This is an important game for both teams. Jimmy Butler tends to, to play better in those, in those big games. And he's going back to Philly where they got, they got rid of him and kept the, the Simmons and, and, and beach duo going any little extra narrative, maybe make it a narrative night, play LeBron and play Jimmy Butler. Sure. It would be different enough, by the way. Um, so I, I do like Jimmy Butler as a potential play, but this is not an exciting game for projections. And then, as you mentioned, always Embiid and Harden have a chance, but it's not it's not something I'm going to prioritize. As far as the shooters, for my, if, if Caleb Martin's out, even those extra few minutes, maybe you could argue for a shot on Duncan Robinson if we don't have value, just to, hoping for the, the six three-point game. You know what I mean? Um, he's, and he's been over 20 back-to-back games. Nothing exciting, though. Uh, I do think Jimmy Butler is probably my highest level of interest. And I want to throw something out there to you, by the way. I, just, I think about this a lot. Um, uh, something you just said with, uh, uh, you know, Butler playing from a narrative perspective. I, just follow, follow along with me for a second. Thought about this. Um, think about it a lot, but it reminded me of it when I was doing MMA uh, research over this weekend. There was you know, a couple of different ways you could attack the slate. And there was one way where all these different wrestlers who, you know, they, they, uh, they have a certain that, that, that wrestling is, is really good for fantasy points. 
but they were kind of in tough matchups. So people that were really interested in, in playing the wrestlers, they play a, a kind of bunch of them. You know what I mean? Like that, cause that's the way they think that's the, it's a really good way to play. And there are other types of players who said, listen, I know that the wrestling gets good upside, but, but I, you know, I, I'd rather play the striker with a better win thing. So they'll, those type of players will play the other guys. And what I was thinking about being unique was that what, what I'd like to do is probably play one from one kind of wrestler and one from the other side, because those types of, of combinations are going to be more unique because you won't, you, you won't have that same mindset, whatever. And likewise, I think, again, like, like if you're the type of player that's going to play, like, let's just say both LeBron and Butler project kind of crappy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, but you're into narratives, you probably, you probably be more inclined to play them both than somebody else would, you know? So, mm-hmm. so one way you could, again, this is like really on the margins, but to be somewhat different is play one of those guys and fade the other one, you know, cause, cause that now, now you're like kind of combining different, different, different forms of analysis, which means right. that, that you're getting a little bit even more different that way. So just some, something to think about. That's interesting. It is, and, and, and I would, I would, I have to mention two things about Kyle Lowry too, before we leave this game. One, He's 5,700 on FanDuel. That's getting to the to the too cheap a range, but there's a lot of good plays on FanDuel that are too cheap. The other thing is, this is a thing historically that Kyle Lowry going back to Philadelphia. He's a Philadelphia kid. Um, he's, you know, he went to Villanova. Uh, I think that there's there's always a little extra extra argument for some of these guys, and he's cheap enough to where he's already an interesting borderline play anyway for me. So I, I'm going to maybe take a shot on Kyle Lowry as well. I'm going with some narrative stuff down the, down the stretch of the season here. Um, it's, it's, and even with what we said about LeBron, maybe it's not LeBron is finding little ways to motivate himself every, I mean, all those games where he's going off and he said, yeah, it's because Stafford was in the stands. I wanted to show. And he was, he's yelling back to Stafford. He's yelling to Aaron, at uh, Aaron Donald on the sideline. All, all the little things you can get um, as an edge when the guys are going to be low on, I'm going to take advantage of. So I, I do like the little, these narrative, little narratives uh, tonight. Toronto, Chicago. Um, what are your thoughts here? Because uh, this should be a, another really good basketball game. <laughs> well, we'll start with uh, Brent Van Vliet, right? If he's going to be in or not, uh, it's going to be. It's usually pretty important, um, but maybe it's not as important. I think he's with- in. I think I saw that he's going to play. I, I mean, I'll just tell you right now, he's going to play every time. He's he unless he's really hurt, and he's played every game lately. He only missed the one game against Denver on the. He, he didn't play. He didn't play yesterday. Did he skip? The, well, then he's definitely going to play. I think um, this is the battle for to get out of the play-in game, um, and you've got only ten games left in the season. Okay. So I, I think that you're going to see him play today. Uh, wait, you didn't play yesterday. They played who? Um, why do I not have that information? I, I think I think that it was probably because they're trying to rest him. Philadelphia. Yeah. He's definitely beaten up. Um, they played at Philly yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's just. I think he's definitely beaten up. But I would. I would imagine he plays tonight, and that's why they rested him yesterday. So, okay. but mostly you're right. Other than that, he, I, I didn't realize he didn't play yesterday, but other than that, he had been playing with the exception of that one. That um, one. I particularly don't really, really like him. I, I think that he's hurt. I mean, I, I just don't think he's been, I don't think he's flashed a ceiling in a while. And I think he's had better spots. He played he scored 42 fantasy points in, in took him 48 minutes to get there in overtime against the Lakers. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like I, it just doesn't seem to be, be right. Um, so I, I don't, I don't like him actually today. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't really like too much of Toronto at all. Um, in this game, but we'll, we'll, we'll see later. Yeah, um, and, and, and Chicago, you have, these guys have been kind of priced down a little bit. And if, if, if no more value opens up, you know, you probably want to play some of these mid rangers, like whether it be, I mean, you name it, you know, Vooch, DeRozan, Levine, they all look, uh, you know, pretty reasonable at, uh, you know, at, at 87, 78, 76, starting from DeRozan down. So I think that if you don't get value, allowing yourself to get up to the, like, you know, Luca, whoever, I think these this range is going to be pretty important. So even though they don't project that great, um, they don't project poorly, and you know, they're all good players. If they all have ceilings, so um, I like all three of those guys. Yeah, uh, good to probably note that Patrick Williams will play tonight for the first time Ooh. in a quite a while. You're not going to play Patrick Williams because this is their you know second year guy. I still think literally in, in like three years, this people are going to be talking about this. He'll be like a first team all all NBA defender. He's a really really good player. Okay. Um, so it's going to cut into a little bit of, of some of these other minutes for the, for the disown moves and the Caruso's. It shouldn't have any effect whatsoever on Levine, Vucevic, or DeRozan. And he's an even lower usage guy than, than Caruso and disown move, which is pretty hard to do. So I, I think one of these, I mean, at these prices, one of DeRozan, Levine, or Vooch, and if I had to rank, I would probably go DeRozan, Vooch, Levine, but it's really close between Levine and Vooch. 
But I think DeRozan would be my favorite, and I think he's a really strong play regardless, and I think you want to get one of them. As of right now, no one specifically showing up for me for Toronto. Very important game, though, for them. Uh, I don't mind if anybody wants to take a shot on Siakam or Van Vliet, but I am probably going to pass. Uh, a Precious has been really good. Uh, just hoping we get a little bit better value later in the day. If he was a little cheaper, I think he's okay, though, anyway. So that's how I've got this one ranked. But mostly it's going to be the Bulls guys for me uh, with DeRozan being my favorite. Uh, what do you got for Boston and OKC? Um, yeah, I like um, – I think that Kuzma is one of the better plays uh, today. Um, I don't really play him all that often. He doesn't really usually show up in the projections. Oh, I, yeah, I, my bad. I said the wrong game. Yeah, Washington, Houston. Sorry, Sheets. Yeah, okay. sure. Um, yeah, I have Washington Houston next. Is um, and he doesn't show up in the projection to be all that often, even though he does well sometimes. He's showing up today for sure, and he got a day off the other night. The other night, um, and Houston gives up a lot of points. You know, this is a really interesting. I don't know if you, you, you would imagine this, but it's actually I think tied for the second for the for the top total on the slate. Washington Houston, yeah, like yeah. 234, 235 or something like that. Um, and Kuzma's down to eight K. I mean, he was over nine K for a while. Um, I, again, you know, you're going into that mid range today I and mean, this is a really, really good price, I think. So, so I, I really, I really like him a lot. Uh, and then Houston, I mean, Christian Wood, I guess, uh, Porter, I guess, but nothing, nothing really big. Um, so for me, I'll, I'll, I'll really try to play, um, whether I try or not, I think I'm going to end up doing it. You know what I mean? I, I think Kuzma's going to show up in a lot of, uh, a lot of lineups today. Yeah, I'm really struggling with the Washington side of this one for me because are we do we really think Kuzma's going to play? I, I well, don't this, yeah, he already they already said Unseld said after Saturday's win that Kuzma's expected to play Monday against the Rockets. I don't know. I still got yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I, I I still have him as a as a cue, and and I don't think I think that he's a play on Fanduel. I don't I don't think that I want to go there. I, there's always upside against Houston, so it's a good spot and everything. But with Kristaps there, assuming that Kristaps does play which I think he will, but is a, again, it's a back-to-back -back for, for Kristaps, right? Yeah, it's a back-to-back -back for Kristaps. No, no, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not a back-to-back, -back. excuse me, the third and four nights. Uh, and he's really taken away a lot of the, uh, the, the, the stuff. I mean, I don't think Kuzma's had 40 fantasy points since, since Kristaps joined the team. Okay. So that's, that's why it's not, I, it's not a back. It's not a back to back. It's not, not. Yeah. I just noticed that it was my bad. Um, he, played, he played back to back against the Knicks. The Lakers. Yeah. Yeah. This would be the, th the third and four, but, um, but it does feel like Washington doesn't have a whole lot to play for. Um, they're sort of, you know, I guess they could say they're lingering play in hopes, but I don't think that there's much, let me just make sure that I'm not speaking out of turn there. Cause that, that is something I'm taking very seriously down this. I mean, this is the time when, when we're starting to get either the very best from their teams or the very worst from certain teams, because you, you have your, your situations, the wizards, they're four and a half at back of the 10 seed. Um, I don't think that they, it's, they're probably not going to make it, but they might still be trying to win. So it's, it's just kind of hard to figure out what to do with that whole thing. Um, and all of these guys sort of rate as like, there's like tons of potential value, Ish Smith and Ruri and all these guys. So if we don't have value, I'm not going to mind if anybody wants to take shots on these guys, but I probably will not. If the only thing was, if Kuzma was out, I would absolutely play Thomas Sutteranski again. Um, I sort of don't know why this guy doesn't get more, love and have, have more of a job i also think denny abdia is, is maybe in play but I, just a lot of maybes for me in this game and on the on the houston side um what a game christian wood had on on saturday that if, if, or friday i mean our guy uh, one guy i was saying he, he had wood paired with i think it was gobert who also had 50 it was like i don't know where he ended up finishing but uh that, that tell us a bit let us know in, in chat about that lineup because that if you would have st started with those guys and just had your immediate 140 fantasy or 135 fantasy points or whatever the hell it was um, probably did really well that night. So, uh, but as of for tonight, I, I just think it's, I guess, Kevin Porter Jr. would be my favorite and not really all that interested in anything else. But just to touch again on a couple of points you made. So Rui Hachimura does rate behind Chris Dunn as the second best his value for now um, on the slate. Like you said, it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say fishy, but you know, it's a lot. And then I do have Ish Smith at 4K as like kind of an okay value. And then, then the other guy you mentioned, Abdia, okay. But somebody that we kind of talked about that you, uh, you know, you, you 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 talked about him, but but maybe we should play him. You want you think we should maybe play Kristoff today? No, um, yeah. I'm, it seems pretty consistent. They're not going to give him thirty minutes, and I think he's fine. I think he actually is going to be owned. Um, if he wasn't owned at all, I could maybe get get a little interest. But 
I it is against it's against Houston. So I actually kind of like the Hachimura idea and maybe taking some shots on this thin value. Um, but I just can't quite seem to to make Kristaps a priority for myself personally. Well, it's and, funny. One thing, but, one thing that we did jump on, you know, when they were playing the Knicks, we were saying, listen, when are they going to play him 30? And we said, you know what, if there was a time to play him 30, it would be going back to New York. And they did. I mean, they played him 29 minutes. That was the most. But, but I have this feeling that that they could have played him, that they, that they I, I don't know, I think they might want to play him more. And now that I looked at it, I was thinking that, okay, he played 29 minutes, but but that was going to be on the front and the back to back. So maybe he had upside if there wasn't going to be in the front and the back to back. And then to the put to that point coming off the 29 minute game, they didn't even sit him in the next game with travel. Like they were in New York. Yeah. Then yeah. they came home to Dallas and they ran him right back out there. Me, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this could be like a 32 minute game for what for, uh, you know what I mean? Like you, you could, this is, this would be a good time to like kind of follow the beat writers, I guess. And, and see what they were saying about this. But, but if you, like, if you told me that, for example, that Kristoff was going to play 32 minutes, for example, I think it'd be a tremendous play. And I think, I think you can make the case that, that he's trending in that direction based on, you know, what I just said about those last two games. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. It's the only thing I'd say is that you just traded for a guy who has been injured for the past four years yeah, yeah. and wouldn't you want to protect him in a season that you don't have anything to play? Uh, it certainly makes sense. Yeah. But I hear you. Um, all right, let's talk about Boston and OKC. Um, I feel like a, the broken record because, but for me, again, all of these guys on Boston are good plays, but not anybody who stands out as being an absolutely great one. My favorite would probably be leaning towards Jalen Brown and Robert Williams. I don't mind Jason Tatum, but I prefer, I like that other, the other expensive plays. Shea is the, it's a, is whether Shea going to play or not? Like, you know what I mean? Is, is he, is he in if he's out? We know we can go to to, to Trey Mann, to uh, to Maladon, to Poku, uh, potentially to Baisley. But I think that of all, you know, assuming that everybody's in, I, I will, I mean, if Poku was three for 20 in the last game. That's crazy. Yeah. And he still put up 30 fantasy points, but yeah. and they, you had no, uh, no, what's his name? He had 30, a 33% usage rate without uh, Shea Gilders Alexander, which is like elite level usage. So if Shea's out, Poku is probably the first guy I'm plugging in. But if Shea is in, at no ownership, even in a tough matchup, at least they're at home and the game could stay close. And he's 9,700. He should be in the conversation with those other guys, in my opinion. Just because he's like, like 4% owned. Sorry, guys. I, I like Tatum. Um, yeah. uh, I like him as much as, as, as some of these other guys. Um, and I, I don't know what the uh, – I, I would like to have Shea in <laughs> for, for right. to be able to play Tatum. Um, Number one, I mean, the game stays close and I'm closer. And number two, you know, just Shay in the game just kind of just speeds it up in general, I think. Um, maybe get some more, more possessions. Um, so I do like Tatum. Uh, Jalen Brown was hoping you would tell me that it's a good Jalen Brown night. I, kinda I like think it him. is actually. I, I, I think it is a good spot for Jalen Brown. He tends to beat up on these weaker teams. But, you know, just with all of the guys healthy with Derek White added, yeah, you're not really – you kind of need your guy to kind of go off like from a scoring perspective for them really to get there, in my opinion, uh, with the exception of Robert Williams in my, you know, again, in my opinion, because Robert Williams doesn't need to do much. He can, he can do it on putbacks on blocks, which in steals, there's pretty much this, this is the second best matchup in basketball for that. The rebounding should be there for him. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just hard for me to prioritize anybody else, but I do think Robert Williams, this is like a, feels like a night where he'll have like four stocks or something like that. And he's going to be really popular on FanDuel for yeah. the reason, I think. I'll tell you, there's a couple, there's, a, there's like four guys that are so cheap. Over there. Like Robert Williams is 6K. Yep. Kuzma is 7K flat on FanDuel. Yeah. Uh, Cade, who I mentioned earlier, is 7,500. And then Vooch is 7,100 over there. So, I mean, like those are some very, very cheap prices. Yep. On some, on some really good players. Um well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I'm, I'm some good fantasy upside player. Oh, uh, okay. And they might be good players too, but that's not relevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and DeRozan at 8,200 also over there. And like you said, all those guys are going to be owning. I'm looking at Cunningham with like 40% ownership over there. I'm looking at DeRozan with 40% ownership. Robert Williams, 30% ownership over there. But anyway, um, uh, I guess I guess we've spoken the Boston yeah. game into the ground. Yeah, but just uh, keep an eye on the Poku thing. It's uh, something to... Something to watch out for. Well, I mean, on the Shea thing, but also even if Shea plays, Poku is still in play. So I'm going to. Well, for, again, fortunately, 
the game's at eight. I mean, all the games are at eight. So yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yep. This is the, and then we have our standalone last game, which is at eight thirty. Nice. I can, I can maybe get out of the house. Not even standing alone. You know what I mean? Like they'll all be going at once. No, exactly. Basically. That's, that's right. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on the Minnesota Dallas game? Um, I like Luka Doncic. I think he's a good basketball player. I think that he's in a, in a close game against a team that plays uh, high total games and, and, uh, now, okay, in fairness, Dallas plays a little slower than Minnesota does. Um, Dallas actually pretty good defensive team nowadays, very good defensive team nowadays, but yet still the total is still pretty reasonable. I think it's I think it's over 230. Um, so uh, Luke is going to project to be the best play, as he usually is, um, when there's no Jokic and when there's no Giannis, and even sometimes when there is uh, Jokic and Giannis. So with none neither of those two guys in the in, in the game in the on the slate, um Luca is a very, very strong play. Uh, so I like that. A uh, couple of other value guys on Dallas. I mean, again, you, you could always go play Dorian Finney-Smith on, on FanDuel if you feel like it. Um, nobody's saying that you have to, though. And I'm not really getting to too much. I mean, you're supposed to play somebody from Minnesota in the spot, aren't you? Like Cat, Cat and I don't know. He's just, he's just not doing it for me. For me... It's kind of silly to think about it, but for me, it's just kind of Luca or nothing in this game. I mean, that can't be right, but that's that's where I am right now. Well, I mean, that makes some sense, though. I mean, you have a very paced down game for minute for Minnesota and a pace up game for Dallas. Um, any of the, the the Minnesota pieces are always in play, and we we know they are. They're playing to win. They're they look tremendous. They've been one of the best teams in the NBA um, for a while now. Uh, it's pretty wild, actually. They, you could argue they've been the best team in the NBA over the past month or so. Um, they're all the way up to six in the East. They need to keep, I mean, what in the West, they need to keep winning games. It's a very big game for them. Um, I, I think that the guy who, who I might have the most interest in is probably Patrick Beverly at 4,700. People want to look down because he had, you know, an eight fantasy point game the other night, but he put up 36 and 42, the pre two previous games. Um, and he's, he, you know, he's got the, he certainly can play his way into the court. The problem is guarding Luca. You would also imagine he probably is getting in foul trouble. Um, I sort of like the idea of the, of, of, of trying to take a shot on these Minnesota guys, but I just don't think they're as good a plays as the other guys on the slate that we already talked about in, in this matchup. Um, but it would be nice to have a run back. Cause I, I do like Luca and on FanDuel, I think that uh, D- Durian Finney Smith and Dwight Powell are both, you know, in play. Um, but uh, Luca, Luca is an awesome play on FanDuel at 10, six and on DraftKings at 12 K I definitely want some exposure, but it's going to be hard for me to pay up for everybody. So uh, that's it. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. So I've got my uh, my list of early priorities. And, you know, it's again, it's got, it needs to be whittled down. But uh, CJ McCollum, LeBron, Darius Garland, one of Cade Bagley, this order, Cade Bagley, Bay, Hayes, or Stewart, depending on injuries and whatnot, what happens. Gobert. Uh, I do like Curry still for, for Brooklyn as a, as a potential upside play. But again, keep an eye on Dragic. Um, I like Butler and Lowry. DeMar DeRose, not together. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, Levine, or Vooch, I would go in that order. Uh, you could argue with Vooch and Levine fairly close. Poku and Luca, and on FanDuel, Joval, Cade, McCollum, LeBron, DDR, Butler, Lowry, Luca, Robert Williams, Vooch, and Powell or DFS. I'll be uh, joining uh, Bobby for live later. I guess awesome. uh, it's at 7 o'clock, so Bobby, you'll be there at 545. Maybe I'll get there at like – I could really be there at 545. Um, but uh, – at the very latest, I'll get there at six. Uh, I just want to. Reason why I don't get there at five forty-five, you get that injury report at five thirty, especially only seven o'clock games. You know, I want to at least get the projections updated before I show up. So, yeah, uh, I should get there by six though. All right, sounds good, man. Well, uh, guys, good luck to everybody. Let's start this week off right with a win. And uh, yeah, hope uh, please like and subscribe and all that stuff, and uh, check out our Discord if you haven't already. Good luck, everybody.